Have you ever returned to playing Skyrim but found that it just feels too outdated? By now everyone's seen these ultra-modded Skyrim videos that just look like completely different games. Or maybe you're like me and you're tired of breaking your own mod list more times than you've played a character past level 10. Well, this might be what you're looking for. Nolvis is a mod list that has its own installer, meaning at the click of a button and some hefty amount of free space on an SSD, your game can look like this, with minimal effort and maximum carnage. This is my full review and guide, aimed at new players, experienced modders, and relentless bastards that subscribe to my channel. So join me as we dive into Skyrim once again, powered by 12 years of modding. Is this even Skyrim anymore? Let's find out. So if I've already piqued your interest, take a wander over to the Novus website, get yourself started, just make sure that you've read the requirements, and you'll need a copy of Skyrim Anniversary Edition and a Nexus Premium account, so your downloads are unrestricted when the installer is trying to download from Nexus. I thought we'd start off with a comparison of vanilla Skyrim versus Novus with its default EMB. For those who don't know, EMBs heavily affect the graphics of your game, such as lighting, reflections and particle effects, with the addition of reshade being filters that can sharpen textures and change the colour tone of your game, and even simulate ray tracing. With Nat 3 seasonal weather, Skyrim's environment will now change depending on the season, with lush fields of green foliage being present in both spring and summer, to the more noticeable decay of trees and grass in autumn. Seeing Riverwood and Whiterun covered in crunchy snow during winter really is immersive. Cities, towns and villages have all been expanded upon, with a great deal of care taken to make sure performance doesn't tank due to excessive clutter. While filming footage, I couldn't help but feel cosy, while sipping a cup of tea as the rain splashed down in Riften, or seeing the smoke rise from a candle as it flickers by a grave in Falkreath in autumn. It's the same city streets that you've walked before, however this time there's just so much more to take in. Like the lantern light of Whiterun, on a starry night as the Skyforge embers sizzle, with the throat of the world towering above us. There's all sorts of knickknacks you can find tucked away in the architecture of the cities, and some of the smaller hold capitals, such as Dawnstar and Mortal, in particular are a huge improvement to their vanilla models. There's too many mods to mention in full, but to mention a few, the list includes the Great Cities, Dawn of Skyrim Director's Cut, Rustic Windows, City Trees, and my new favourite, Stunning Statues of Skyrim, along with many specific additions to each individual location, patched all to work alongside each other. Landscapes have been completely transformed in comparison to vanilla, with the tundra of Whiterun being the most noticeable. Now it's a lush meadow with groves of trees scattered throughout to make mini forests across the once barren plains of Whiterun. There's honestly so much landscape, tree and grass mods patched and working together, it's astonishing really. I haven't seen any grass out of place with how varied the trees are as well, they seems to be specific to region a lot of the time, I've started to know where I am based on the types of trees around. These are all dynamic to the current season too, with trees being lush and vibrant, decaying from autumn or covered in snow from winter. On ultra settings, the lods are also great, some of the best I've seen actually, with distant views of landmarks and settlements and ruins, all being much higher detail. Mountain flowers for various concoctions have never looked better, one for all those wannabe alchemists out there I think. There's something special about god rays seeping through tree branches at sunset that just hits different in Skyrim. A really unique change I liked was the Rorik's Dead Basalt Cliffs, which are really striking and unique. Honourable mention to Blue Boss, whose tree mods are prominent throughout Norvus, along with some custom models designed for the list. Still King of the Hill, in my opinion, is Majestic Mountains, which has stood the test of time and is tailor-made to Norvus with custom patches. I'd often find myself just stopping to soak it all in from the peak of a mountain, after a hard day of adventuring. Makes you understand why dragons love them so much. And while we're up here, why don't I show you a new way to get down from the mountain? And no, 
it's not the Lydia Express method. Skyrim's Paraglider mod lets you take to the skies just as the Dover would do. It even comes with its own nifty spell to boost elevation, but I should warn you, you might get some unwanted attention. Skyrim sees the return of dragons to the land, and while it's kind of a big deal, it should also look the part and offer a challenge to any brave hero wanting to get into Sovngarde. Dragons now have larger wingspans, are stronger in general thanks to the Deadly Dragons mod, and you'll see a larger variety of unique looking dragons due to the old favourite, Diverse Dragons. The real MVP, however, is Kay and Hash, who made these amazing Game of Thrones inspired dragon models. It's not just dragons that roam the lands, however, with near enough every creature having some sort of glob up, whether it's textures or complete remodels, not to mention a whole bunch of new monsters for you to run into, thanks to Mihail and his various mods. One of my favourites in recent years has to be the Bears of the North. Not only has it made the bears much larger and more threatening by design, but they're just so damn furry. Anyway, there's lots of creatures for you to discover as you explore, and Hunterborn is included for those wanting to roleplay as a hunter. I can see, however, that you're left wanting more. And well, there's only one place left to look. Deeper into the dark. Venturing into dungeons has never been more dangerous, with a whole host of creatures now ready to scare the living shit out of you. There's more terrifying things than wolves and bears in the deep dark areas of Skyrim now, especially with Mihail's vampire beasts, which are truly the thing of nightmares, with models taken from The Witcher 3. I took a wrong turn into Morthal and discovered a whole host of ghoulish horrors and demon spawn. The extra variety of creatures you encounter really does put a fresh spin on the dungeon delving experience. And while I'm not a big fan of Molag Bol or his followers, I have to say that I couldn't pass up the opportunity to see what these creatures look like up close. While some of the movements can be a little janky with Mahail mods, I do think that overall they're a great addition to the list. While we're on the subject of creatures of the night and servants of Morlag Bol, what better to show you next than not one, but two vampirism systems working together. There is much to learn, but if you master the powers of the Vampire Lord, few enemies will be able to stand against you. You will walk as a lion among sheep. With Skyrim Unbound, you can now start your Skyrim adventure already as a base vampire. Thanks to the fully integrated custom skills menu, players can now strengthen their vampirism in new ways without having to become a vampire lord. This works seamlessly with Sacrosant, the main vampirism overhaul present in Nolvus. Some of the perks take elements I enjoyed from the base Vampire Lord abilities, such as turning into bats or allowing players to roleplay as a medieval Darth Vader with Vampiric Grip. As I mentioned before, the Sacrosant Vampire Overhaul is added to the list, which adds a metric shit ton of perks within the Vampire Lord skill tree. These don't only affect the transformation, but your base form too, along with a whole host of base vampire changes and progression systems, including new spells and abilities. The overall itself has so many features that it would require its own dedicated video, so if you want to find out more, it's best to go and check out the mods page on Nexus and read through the description. I thought it'd be really cool to show you different combat styles themed around features of Novus, so here's what I had in mind for a Vampire Countess, focusing on several magic schools, vampiric abilities and one-handed rapiers for that Castlevania flavour. When you're feeling overwhelmed and need to take some heat off, Conjuration is a fantastic tool that fits nicely into the vampire-themed playstyle. For this example, we're conjuring Blood Knights, acquired from the Vigilant expansion, as we evaluate the fight and plan our next move. Vampiric Grip lets you ragdoll enemies and throw them away from you, especially useful from great heights, and it's unlocked from the Vampirism skill tree. Vampiric Drain is the bread and butter for any vampire, but now it actually scales thanks to the custom skill tree and the Sacrosanct overhaul. If you want to completely cheese fights, however, the Shadow Weave envelops the user in shadows, turning you invisible, but more importantly, pulling you back into the invisibility after making an attack. It's a dual cast spell with a wind up time, so it does help to have a distraction in place. They say there's no greater enemy than yourself, so why not channel that philosophy with Shadow Legion from the Odin Magic Overhaul? creating doppelgangers to fight their counterparts with relentless energy. If you need to regain some health and magicka while staying on the offensive, Draining Shroud from Triumvate is my top pick. One-handed rapiers have been added to the game with a few unique animations. Here's some combos in the green and blue stance. First up, a light attack, power attack combo. Still in the green stance, we have a double light attack, power attack combo. 
And then for the blue stance we have a triple light attack, which is very thrust heavy, and a double light attack power attack combo. We will cover stances a little later in more depth, don't worry, along with additional attacks and conduit, but before I do I wanted to show an absolute opposite to a vampire, a combat style way out of my comfort zone, which I really enjoyed trying out. And while we're at it, we can talk about the religion system in Norbus, which is surprisingly in-depth. If you hadn't guessed it yet, this is my take on a cleric combat style. Thanks to the Triumphant spell pack, this playstyle is fully realised. When entering combat, I like to cast Consecrated Ground for a large AoE with damage over time. We follow this up with Life Tap for additional lifesteal on melee hits. You might also notice that there's a glowing white aura. This is Visions of Healing, a long-lasting AoE aura sapping life from anyone within 40 feet. For our ranged option, I'm using Spirit Storm, which hurls these eerie-looking spirits towards your enemies, draining everything from them. Clerics are usually depicted with blunt weapons such as maces, which I've never really enjoyed in Skyrim. While they do feel slow, they can be devastating once you spend some perk points and get familiar with the more effective combos. Using a power attack in the red stance unleashes a swirling ground slam, which can be quite effective. A double tap light attack into a power attack does a flurry of blows, followed by a small leap slam. The blue stance has a nice arcing swing into ground pound combo using the double light power attack input. The animations are a little too slow to truly feel fluid, however with everything else running on this build, it's more than likely that you'll only ever need to hit the enemy once or twice. This build doesn't stop at just combat however, as one of the major elements of a cleric is their faith. Thankfully, Nolvus has Winter Sun, Faith of Skyrim. A religion system with some surprising depth that's not only for roleplay but can affect other aspects of your playtime, including empowering your attacks or granting efficiency in a particular skill. You can even have RK raise you from the dead, should you be a loyal follower and respect the things that those deities require from you. The mob boasts a total of 50 deities, a prayer and worship system, and even holy relics to search out in the name of your chosen god. I think this really shows the attention to detail and variety that Vector wanted for the novice mod list, and I truly wouldn't play Skyrim without this addition. Alright milk drinkers, it's time you learned how to fight with a real weapon, instead of whatever that is. I breezed over a few combos already, but it's time that we talked in depth about Norvus's melee combat system. There's a ton to go through, and while I won't be showing you every single combo for every single weapon, this guide should give you enough understanding so that you can become a true master with whatever weapon you pick up. Starting off with additional attack, which adds a separate keybind with its own attack animations and combos, these aren't stance dependent and are easy to learn. First, let's show how to set up the keybind on the MCM. Additional attack is conveniently near the top of the list. We first assign our keybind, my preference is the side mouse button, and to make the attack more impactful, I like to take extra damage. The attack animation will be different to your standard attacks, and if you hold shift down, you'll use one of two leap attacks, depending on which config you are using. To change from config A to config B, simply equip the power and use it. This can be found in your power and shouts magic menu. Some weapons do have a backward movement attack, but not all. You'll have to experiment with each weapon type. Once you're comfortable, you'll find ways of weaving these into main attacks with various stances. Speaking of stances, let's explain the mechanics here, starting off with the MCM menu, should you want to change the keybinds. The default for Novice is using hotkey 1, 2, 3 and 4, and I dislike this personally, so I changed it to switch hotkey. This allows you to use directional movement and your chosen hotkey to swap between the stances. Stances have their own animation combos, here's some examples of a steel spear using a triple light attack, power attack combo in each stance. While this example has different animations for each stance, it is worth noting that some stances will have the same animations just because the animation pool is smaller, such as rapiers having a high and mid stance being basically the same. There is a dedicated power attack button, the default being V. This cuts out some of the fluff from the standard hold left click animations. As I mentioned earlier, the green stance here with sword and shield and the red stance both have the same power attack animation. It's worth noting that when I say green stance or mid, it's the same thing. Depending on your reference, your stance indicator can glow your character a certain colour or have an animal icon above their head, or the more commonly referred to method of low, mid and high stance. 
The stances and their animations aren't just tied to what weapon you have in your main hand, as this example shows dual wielding is different to sword and shields. And if we have a sword in our main hand, but a dagger in our offhand, the animations again would be different. Here's a light attack spam example from both as a comparison. I remember when I first used a sword and dagger in the high stands, as the animation is just absolutely wild when spamming light attacks. I think my only critique to the stances in Norvis specifically is that in other games such as Neo, which stances are inspired from, the high stance is commonly the slower of the three. In Norvis this is flipped with the low stance being the slow and the high stance being the fast. This isn't the case for each weapon type, but more often than not. It really isn't a big deal, but it might throw some people off. I never really felt like I wanted to play a Khajiit, until I saw this monk armour inspired by their culture. Sadly this armour isn't in Norvis yet. It got me thinking, could we make a martial artist scale well? Then I remember there's an actual hand-to-hand -hand custom skill tree in Norvis. Combined with light armor perks from the Ordinator skill tree overhaul, playing as a martial artist is a ton of fun, and honestly, it might even be a little bit OP. There's perks like Spearhand that make attacks ignore 80% of armor, or Lucky Punch giving 10% chance for power attacks to do 100% more damage. Or Black Hand, which makes sneak attacks do 16 times the detail, I mean, uh, damage. What's crazy is this is on legendary difficulty, and I'm basically two-shotting these legionnaires. When I have a time, I kind of want to test this build out more, to see how far we can really, really push it. But for now, I just thought I'd show you guys that the hand-to-hand -hand skill tree exists, and it's quite fun. Gives me another idea, actually, to play a Batman-style character with illusion magic and hand-to-hand. -hand. I'll have to see if I can make that work. For now though, enjoy this short montage. Well that was fun. I can't wait to experiment more with a monk themed character, but for now, let's move on to talk about one of my favourite ways to play. And judging by all the stealth archer memes out there, you guys love it too. You guessed it, we're going rogue. Something out there is piss drunk mad at us. I don't know who or what it is, but it's beyond just you and me. Thanks to the Ordinator perk overhaul for vanilla perks, there's now some really fun and interesting abilities to unlock via the various thief perk trees. Like Smokescreen, which blinds enemies to sneaking opponents within a 35 meter cloud of smoke. It's great for wannabe assassins and thieves alike, but there are perks for non-lethal activities too, such as Thief's Eye, which marks a target in a city that you've entered. Pickpocketing these marks yield a ton of loot. I find this to really scratch the itch on making pickpocketing more exciting. There's new stealth detection indicators with the UI, and some silly perks to troll your enemies with, such as Tripwire and its follow-up perk, Backup Plan, which places another tripwire when entering combat. You can train a rabbit to lead you to loot, or in true Indiana Jones style, crouch slide your way through traps, or even people. Greased Lightning is hilarious when enemies are chasing you down, and has to be my top pick for rogue shenanigans. Some things you can't run away from though, and it's time to get your hands dirty. One of the more recent additions to the list is Rapid Bow Combo. First, let's get the MCM sorted by assigning its keybind. Thankfully, it's near the top of the list as Bow Rapid Combo. Once we click into this, there's only one button we actually need to assign as the second combo key is not used at the moment. Before we get fully into Rapid Shots, your standard left click now charges up to three tiers, doing more damage the longer it's held. Be careful. Your default right click or your left hand keybind if you've changed something will do a rapid shot. Moving backwards while using this keybind will do a backward rapid shot. You can perform a double rapid shot by simply strafing left or right while using the same keybind. A similar action but with the rapid bow combo keybind will either slide slash or punch depending on whether or not you have crafted or equipped a secondary dagger. Probably the most flashy combo that you've seen is the backward movement rapid bow combo keybind. Hopefully that gives you some insight into becoming the best damn stealth archer in the land. It's worth noting that this Imperial Mail preset is in the list and is created by myself. I'll show you how to use those presets later on in the video. Now it's time we briefly talk about quest overhauls and magic in general. 
Let's take a nosy over to the College of Winterhold now, as quite a lot had changed since the last time I'd visited. The college has seen a ton of overhauls in the past, but it always kept the same quest structure, which seemed to move along at breakneck speed. But with the college quest expansion, that's all changed, with the various different teachers actually investing in their students by teaching new spells and sending you an errands based on the spells that you've learned. Like Tolfde here, teaching me how to use water breathing. Ah, oh, excellent! Very good! Today I'll teach you a useful spell that might just save your life. If you should ever fall into a river, you'll be very glad you learned it. Once I learnt the spell, he sent me off to meet Arniel Gain, who then took me on an expedition which had me looking out for lost relics underwater. Uh, waste of time, then. Certainly none of this will benefit my research. Next we have a feature that completely slipped under my radar. Big shout out to Gaiton for sharing his knowledge. Here's a quick rundown on how to use Conduit. First you'll need to grab the Conduit book. I got mine from Farangar in Dragon's Reach. All you have to do then is click the Conduit power until it says learnt in the book. You now have the ability in your magic tab. Once you have that, equip a spell in your left hand that you'd like to use. Let's try a lightning spell. Once we have that sorted, pull out your weapon and then use the ability. As you can see you sizzle with elemental energy with this and your weapon is now infused with lightning. This actually overlays on top of enchantments on your weapons as well. This isn't just a damage worth either, but interesting mechanics that synergize with each other, requiring you to use conduit abilities more frequently. It's quite in depth and I think it's best that you look in the conduit mod page to get a full grasp of the mechanics here. Keeping with the current theme, it's time to field test the blade staffs, which are capable of casting spells, and I believe this is inspired by Dragon Age. I had a ton of fun once I'd figured out what to do with this one. First we're going to need a blade staff, and then the Stones of the Fade, which you can craft from a blacksmith forge. Or you could use the add item menu for a non-legit method. You have to be in neutral stance for the spell casting to work, other stances will revert back to a melee weapon variant of the staff, which will come in useful. The attacks ramp up to basically master level destruction spells with some CC, and I'm here for it. While using the Firestone, a light attack and power attack combo releases a fire tornado, lifting enemies into the air. Equipping any of the stones with your blade staff will turn your dodge into a longer range misty step. The fire tornado, along with the other stones variants, can hit targets even from behind cover. To get to a master spell level combo, you want to be spamming 6 attacks, with the last two being power attacks for definite. The tricky part is that you are exposed during this last section of the combo. Using a light attack power attack combo on the ice stone sends out the ice form shell, freezing all in its path. This is so cheesy I love it. You can freeze a group and then swap stance, and then just whack them to death. It's especially good in a choke point as well, where all the enemies are running towards you, you just freeze all of them, it's great. This lightning attack combo sends a force push. Just in case you were wondering, these do count as destruction spells and your ordinator perks such as magnetize will work. It's probably for the best that this is a two-handed weapon because this paired with conduit on top would be on another level of busted. If you're looking to become a wizard king though, then make sure you give this one a try. There's only so much new spell packs can bring to the table and this is a welcome change to your ordinary caster. Nolvis has a ton of magic overhauls for you to sink your teeth into and make some really interesting builds. I thought we'd focus on using the magic of the land and some elements to show off some druid combat styles. Druids are known for their attunement to nature and shapeshifting capabilities, so with the help of all things magic, let's get into it. One way to get around is to conjure this giant wolf Kyrakim to your side. While riding him, lesser enemies will run in fear. One of my favourite fire spells is flame darts, lots of damage and the effect just looks really cool. Speaking of cool, Frostnova is a great way of dealing with advancing enemies, especially when juiced up with some of the Ordinator perks in the Destruction Tree. The Triumvirate spell pack is a bit of a no-brainer, as the mod features class-themed spells, one archetype being Druid, there's some great shape-shifting spells such as Force of Nature and Wild Shape, along with a host of others. 
Just to recap and confirm, that's three major spell overhauls to sink your teeth into, but let's trade Fire and Frost now for a bloody Fang and Claw. The Growl Werewolf overhaul allows you to play as either a werewolf or a werebear, and can be changed at any time through the MCM. This comes with a random chance to transform at night time, and players are no longer restricted to one transformation per day, and instead it's now just a cooldown, similar to like a shout. The perk tree is also expanded upon, and does have a perk to turn off the random transformation, for those who may be worried about that. With a combination of Frost, Fire, Fang and Claw, I think those looking to play this type of character will be more than satisfied. Also, Frozen Orb from Apocalypse is actually busted, and I appreciate the Diablo inspiration here. You can further your Druid Immersion with the Lady Standing Stone, which spawns a Saber Cat companion every time you enter combat, and this thing kinda shreds. It took down three White Run guards just while I watched. Speaking of Standing Stones, thanks to the mod Andromeda, all the passives and powers have been reworked, and there's some fantastic choices, with my top pick being the Apprentice, for no mana cost or novice spells. Last on the list to show you is how to apply presets in the character creation slash race menu. Presets are a great way to get a baseline for how you want your character to look and then alter, or to just dive straight in. So to get started, let's select an Imperial for the Waylander preset. Once we're there, let's go to presets and click on load preset. We're going to look through the list for the Waylander preset here. And bada bing bada boom, here we go. Reviewing Nolvis has been a real journey of discovery. Nostalgia and community engagement, I've learned a lot. Made new friends and helped a bunch of people out in the process. And while there's lots that I still haven't covered in this review, perhaps I've earned a like, comment and sub. And if the video does well, I'd love to return for part two. Let me know in the comment section if you've already been playing Nolvis and that I taught you something new. Or are you just part of the download gang, eagerly awaiting the installer to finish so that you can return to Tamriel once again? A huge thank you to the Skyrim modding community and of course to Vector for creating this incredible, stunning model list. That's it from me now, ciao for now.